What's going on guys? John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to push your Flask app to Heroku for web hosting. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at web hosting using Heroku. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so we're basically done with this little app here. We've got our friends section, we can add a friend, we can update a friend, we can delete a friend and we're pretty much good to go. So this has all just been locally, what if we want to push this online for web hosting? How do we do that with flask? Well, there's lots of different web hosting companies you can use. I like a company called Heroku. They have a free tier and that's what we're going to be using in this video. And they host things like Flask apps, Django apps, uh, Ruby on Rails apps, things like that. And they've been around forever. They're a really good company. And like I said, they have a free tier. And if you want to then bump up from the free tier, because the free tier is not very powerful, right? If more than a few people come to your website at any given time, it's going to get really slow, right? So then you can bump up to the next paid tier, which is the hobby level, which I think is like seven bucks a month. And then if more people start coming to your website, you can bump up to the standard plan. And then you pick dinos. Dinos are like horsepower, right? So the more dinos you have, the faster your website will go. So you pick one dino to start with. And it's like 20 bucks a month or something, somewhere around there. And then as more people come to your website, you can, you can add more dinos just by clicking a button. And then you pay more, but you only pay as you need it as your website becomes more popular. So I really like them and that's that's why. So uh, that's what we're gonna be using in this video. So head over to heroku.com. And if you don't have an account, go ahead and sign up. It's free to sign up. They used to ask for a credit card when you signed up just to ver verify that you're human. I don't know if they still do that. They're not gonna charge you unless you tell them to. So you don't have to worry about it. They're a really reputable company. And like I said, you can look at pricing if you want. You can see uh, free. We got standard 25 to 50 bucks per dino, 20 bucks. 25 at the hobby level. Uh, so that's cool. So go ahead and sign up, get, get yourself an account. Now, in order to use this, we need something called the Heroku tool belt. So let's go Heroku tool belt, search at Google. I misspelled tool belt. <laughs> and here it is. It's the Heroku CLI. CLI stands for command line interface. And this is devcenter.heroku.com forward slash articles forward slash Heroku dash CLI. And you can download, download this for Mac, Linux, or Windows. Now, I'm on Windows, so I would download the 64-bit installer. I'm not going to because I've already got it on my computer. You just click that, it downloads to your computer. If you're on Firefox, you come up here to their downloads. If you're on Chrome, you come down here to your downloads, lower left-hand corner, and just click the thing and install it, and you're good to go. Now, one thing to note, you will have to restart your Git Bash terminal after you've installed this. So, Control-C to break out of this. So, just come up here, you know, close out of this, restart it, and then uh, you'll be able to use Heroku after that. If you don't restart it, it won't know that you've installed Heroku and you won't be able to use it. So once you restart your Git Bash terminal, make sure you're in your C My Flask directory, make sure your virtual environment is turned on. If you don't remember, that was uh, source, uh, virtual scripts, activate in order to turn on your virtual environment. And uh, okay, so in order to use Heroku, in order to push our code up to Heroku, we need to make a few changes to our app. Uh, just a couple of tweaks here and there. Up until now, we've been using the sort of development web server that comes with Flask, and that's fine for development purposes, but it's not a professional web server, and you need one when you push your code up to Heroku for professional web hosting. So we can just install one real quick. Let's go pip install, and we want Gunicorn. So it's G-U-N-I-C-O-R-N. It's unicorn with a G on it, right? So Gunicorn. So go ahead and pip install that. Okay, now we need to let Heroku know that we're using Gunicorn. So let's create a, a file called a proc file. So just type in touch and then proc file and P is capitalized in proc file. And then we can head over to our code and you see down here, there's our proc file and it's empty. So we need just one line of code in here. We need to type in web colon space and then Gunicorn. Make sure you spell that right, unicorn with a G. And then we need to tell Heroku what kind of an app we're doing. So we're doing app colon app. And the reason why I call it app the second time around is because our app.py file, that's what we named this right here, right? App.py. If you named it something besides app.py, you would type whatever that is there. So, okay, that's all. We can go ahead and save this. Now we also need to let Heroku know all of the requirements in our app, Flask, SQL Alchemy, 
gunicorn, all those things. So we need a requirements.txt file. So head back over here and let's go pip freeze and then the greater than sign, I think that's it, or is that equal to, or is that less than? Whatever sign that is. Uh, and then type in requirements.txt, right? And when we look at our code, we see now we have this requirement.txt file, and it just lists all the stuff that we've pip installed up until now, right? So, okay, we're good to go there. Now, we need to do a couple more things real quick. In order to push your code up to Heroku, it needs to be in the form of a Git repository. Git is a type of version control. We're using the Git bash terminal. It comes with Git, we just need to turn it on. So to turn it on, we can just type in Git init, I-N-I-T. And when we do that, you see, boom, there's this master. It's created a master branch, an empty Git repository. So now we need to put all of our code into the repository. So to do that, we type in Git add period. The period stands for everything. We're saying add everything in our MyFlask directory to this Git repository. We hit enter and whoa, it's doing its thing. It's adding all of our stuff. And okay, we can clear the screen now. And now we just need to commit that to the repository. We added it, now we need to save it. So git commit dash am, and then give this a little message. I'm just gonna say initial commit. It's our first commit. And uh, you can type anything there. It's just a little message to remind you later on if you wanna know why we're doing this. Well, it's our initial commit. So, okay, and that's all there is to it. So we are now ready to push this code up to Heroku and we start by logging in. So let's go Heroku login. And it's gonna ask us to press any key to open a web browser, so we do that. And then just log into your Heroku account here. So, let me do this real quick. And password. Okay, so we're logged in, we can close this now, and then head back over to our terminal. And you can see it's sort of just hanging here. Hit the control button and the C key at the same time on your keyboard, and terminate to, to get out of there. Okay, so we're logged in, let's clear the screen. Now let's go Heroku create. We, we need to create an app on Heroku. And okay, here's the app it's created for us. So we can copy this and let's head over to our web browser and paste this in and take a look. And this is just the default screen you see. Now look at this URL, Arcane Everglades. We can change this if we want. So uh, you can also use your own domain names. I've got lots of videos on my channel about uh, using your own domain name with Heroku. It's super easy, it's free if you already own a domain name. Uh, you can search my channel, just search for Heroku, and uh, you'll see a bunch of videos on that. I'm not gonna talk about it in this video. You can go watch some of those other ones. But we can change this weird looking gobbledygook right here. And to do that, just type in Heroku rename, and then give this a name. I'm gonna call it Elder Name, I don't know. And if that has been taken, you'll get an error message. If it's not, it will rename it to eldername.herokuapp.com. So elder name, because we're creating this little uh, friends, friends name list, I don't know, <laughs> just anything you want. Uh, but now we can just change this to elder name. That's a terrible name. I'm bad at naming things. But anyway, you can see now, here we are. It's a little bit of a better URL, right? Uh, it's still better to use your own domain name, but uh, whatever. So, okay, now we just need to push our code up to Heroku. So to do that, we type in git push Heroku master. We're, we're pushing the master branch of our git repository up to Heroku. And this can take, you know, a minute or so to do, sometimes less, sometimes more, it just kind of depends. And you can see here, it's building our source, it's doing all kinds of things. It's noticed, hey, this is a Python app. It's installing Python, it's installing pip. It looks like I maybe need to upgrade to the latest version of Python. I'm a couple of, I think we're on what, 0.8 now or something. Yeah, it's installing SQLite 3. And now it's looking at our requirements.txt file and it's finding all of our requirements, right? And it's installing them. All right, it's figured out, hey, there's our proc file. This is a web app, right? So that's important. And now it's compressing, launching, it's pushed it to that URL. And it looks like it should be now sometimes you get errors when you do this. If you do, just kind of look through the error to find something that looks like English and copy it to Google and just search and you'll often find the solution to that error right away. So, okay, it looks like it's done. So we can head back over here and hit reload and boom. Now this is live and online and it works. We can go to our friends thing. We can type in Tina again, or maybe lowercase Tina. We can add a name, boom, it worked. We're still online here. Uh, we can update Tina, let's go 
Tina Smith. All right, and we can delete Tina and it works. All of the other pages of our app are still there and very, very cool. So it is just that easy to push your app, your Flask app up to Heroku for professional, real web hosting. This is completely free at the, the free tier that we're using. Like I said, if more than a few people come to this thing at once, it's gonna drag real slow and it may even crash if more, you know, if more than a few people come at once. Uh, but for free, you can't beat it. And like I said, you can always upgrade and pay if your website starts to get popular. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 40 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and we'll see you in the next video.